Welcome to RCR Wireless News. I'm Martha DeGrasse, and I'm here with Marquis Doré. He is Front Hall Product Line Manager at Expo. Marquis, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Martha. Thank you for having me today. Our topic today, obviously, is fiber and front hall. So I'd like to start off by hearing about the biggest challenges that you think MNOs face when deploying fiber in mobile networks. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, maybe I would start off by saying that uh, the traditional mobile installations use copper to, to interconnect the base station equipment to the antenna sites. Uh, it could be at the top of a tower or maybe at a, at a rooftop. But I would say this type of architecture, because of the high power loss in the, in the copper cables, uh, it does not scale well for, for future 5G, uh, 5G type of networks where uh, centralization of the BBUs, the baseband units, uh, the equipment that's used typically at the bottom of the tower, centralization is absolutely needed for 5G. And when we talk about centralization, uh, the BBUs could be placed uh, miles or kilometers away from the actual antenna site. So for this reason, uh, there's a move towards what we call FTTA, fiber to the antenna, or even CRAN, uh, centralized radio access networks uh, that are becoming common today. And the move towards uh, FTTA and CRAN really does add a lot of uh, benefits or advantages to mobile network operators all, all around the world, so MNOs. But it also includes, uh, I would say, a, a fair, share, fair share of challenges and issues. And the fact that one biggest point in there is this, uh, the fact that uh, optical fibers is often new to, to the uh, mobile, uh, mobile industry for the guys that are working in this uh, does add a lot of complexity during the, uh, the installation and during the construction of the mobile cell site. Uh, just for example, uh, in a CRN network, how do you actually ensure that you don't have uh, maybe dirty connectors that could potentially degrade your optical signal? between the BBU and the, uh, the RH. Uh, how do you find a, let's say, a macro band, a band fiber in a fiber span that could span up to 10 kilometers uh, for the front hall? How do you pinpoint and find, uh, let's say, for example, uh, a missing fiber interconnection? How do you ensure that, uh, uh, for example, that you, you've connected the, uh, to, the, to the correct port, let's say, at the RH, or that you have not reversed your fibers at the RH itself? So how do you confirm all that? Well, this is where you, you actually need a, a, a frontal test solution to help you out with all these potential issues. And without, I would say, without the right uh, testing solution, without uh, something that's really essential, the, the right testing procedure, uh, field technicians could actually spend hours and in some cases even days troubleshooting some very common, uh, common issues uh, that we run into every day when, when helping out uh, during these, these network installations. And in the end, this I would say this translates into a uh, huge cost for, for mobile network operators uh, all across the world. Okay, great. Are there any other specific challenges related to the presence, the presence sorry, of those active optical components in that link between the BBU and the RRH? Uh, that's, that's another good question. And I would say that uh, with what we call with the RAN evolution from the uh, traditional copper-based mobile installations, that have now been uh, replaced with fiber-based mobile installations, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, for example, with, uh, with DRAN, something that we call uh, distributed radio access networks, where the, the actual BBU, the baseband unit, is installed uh, at the antenna site, and your interconnection is, is between the BBU and the RH are done with fiber optics in that case. Uh, with CRAN, with the move towards centralized radio access networks, uh, in order to reduce the, uh, what I call the fiber count, the amount of fibers between the uh, centralized BBUs, uh, those, those BBUs that could be located in a, in a data center, for example, uh, just to reduce the, the amount of fibers, you need active transport equipment uh, between, those, uh, between the BBU, let's say the BBU hotel and the actual RH uh, site. And these active transport equipment will, uh, will use technologies such as uh, CWDM, uh, or even DWDM, these are, are transport technologies uh, that will be used to actually uh, take in all those SIPRI links and merge them all onto a sim single uh, single fiber to and from the uh, BBU hotel and the actual antenna sites. And in active CRAN uh, networks, uh, since there's, there's active equipment between the BBU and the antenna sites, uh, the complexity of the mobile installation itself increases. 
uh, even just added complexity just in, in terms of the actual network architecture that's being implemented. And something, uh, something I, I, I discussed recently with, uh, with a, a tier one MNO in the US is that they mentioned uh, that 60 to 70% of their active CRAN deployments today have installation issues uh, from the get-go. So it's issues could be uh, such as uh, improper configuration of the active uh, transport equipment. Uh, it could be improper uh, colored optics that are being used. Uh, when I'm talking about colored optics, I'm talking about, uh, let's say, CWDM or, or DWDM actual SFP modules. Uh, in some cases, it's uh, the ROM modules that are being used. And in other cases, it's just uh, simple fiber interconnection issues, uh, just by the sheer fact that there's a lot more uh, equipment that, that is involved in the uh, whole frontal uh, testing solution. So uh, really to overcome all these, these issues and these challenges, uh, I would say that there's, there's a need for a proper testing solution and, and really to help the installation verification teams. And at XO, this is one thing I, I think we, we, we do very well is that we work closely with, uh, with MNOs and, and their teams to actually develop something that we call a, a MOP, it's a method of procedure. To, uh, to really minimize uh, and, and even in certain cases, even eliminate the, all these inflation uh, challenges and issues that we're talking about today. Okay, great. Now you mentioned CIPRI Link's common public radio interface and another protocol that we hear a lot about in this context is OBSI. Can you explain the difference between those two? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so as I mentioned before, with the, uh, with the move towards uh, fiber-based mobile inflation, the base station equipment has been actually uh, separated into two pieces of equipment today. So there's the, the actual the BBU, which I mentioned before, the base van unit, and there's the RH, the remote ready head uh, piece of equipment. Uh, the BBU is typically at the bottom of a tower or maybe centralized in the data center. The RH itself is, uh, which is actually composed of two, two uh, components, is the radio and the RF amplifier is actually mounted at the antenna site, very close to the, uh, to the antennas themselves. And the interconnection between the BBU and the RH is done over fiber optic cable, and the actual uh, digital RF information that is transported between these two equipments is using one of two protocols. So it could be either CIPRI, which is Common Public Radio Interface, or it could be OBSITE, which is the Open Base Station uh, Architecture Initiative. And with CIPRI, uh, it's a specification that was actually uh, initially released uh, way back in 2003, which actually defines the, uh, I would say, the internal interfaces between the BBU and the RH itself. And the vendors that were, uh, that were working on this, the uh, CIPRI specification uh, cooperated together, uh, vendors such as Ericsson, Huawei, NEC, and Nokia. On the off-site side, uh, again, it's, it, it's similar in terms of its uh, interface specification. was initially developed in 2002, so it's a bit, it's a bit older in terms of the specification. And it was uh, created by companies as uh, ZTE, Nokia, Samsung, and LG. Uh, I would say that both protocols have, uh, have something that's called a CNM portion, which is the uh, control and management. And they also have a data transport portion. The CNM, uh, again, control and uh, control management, is really used to uh, for internal communications between the BBU and the RH itself. Uh, for the data transport uh, portion, it's uh, it's used for uh, transporting the RF signal, the uh, actual the uh, analog RF signal in a digital format, and this format is actually called uh, IQ data, something that. Uh, people in the uh, communication industry are very familiar with. IQ data, uh, is that what you said? IQ data? IQ data, yeah, IQ data. Uh, on the outside protocol side, the, uh, the control management uh, portion has a very clear definition uh, and it, it really allows for equipment vendor interoperability. In contrast to that, uh, on the CIPRI uh, CNM portion, if you want, it's vendor specific. So there's no possibility for uh, equipment vendor interoperability, meaning uh, let's say if you have a, a BBU from Ericsson, it will not interoperate with let's say Huawei or Alcatel Lucent or Nokia uh, and vice versa. And, and maybe a small point to make here is, is some people in the industry call, uh, call CIPRI uh, instead of calling it a common public radio interface, they actually call it custom proprietary radio interface. Just 
by the nature of it uh, being vendor specific. And maybe I would say the uh, the last point I would like to make on, on Cyprian Opsi is the fact that uh, on a worldwide basis, uh, Cipri has roughly 95% of the uh, the worldwide market today. And one one key point there is that there's an evolution of the actual specification. Uh, there was an actual uh, specification that was released fairly recently, October 2015, and it specifies uh, data rates of up to 24.3 gig. On the opposite side of that, OBSI specification defines a maximum uh, data rate of 6.1 gig, and that was actually uh, back in 2010. So there was no evolution of the actual specification for OPSI. So I would say those are the main points between the two uh, protocols on that side. Okay, terrific. Well, we have talked quite a lot about some of the challenges inherent in testing fiber-based networks, CIPRI, OPSI as well. All that said, where does RF fit into this picture? It's, uh, it, it's a great question, and this is something that, uh, that brings a lot of uh, <clears throat> new inter interrogation for uh, mobile field techs in the industry. And I would say today, I mean, with the increased competition, uh, it's really forcing the, the mobile network operators, the MNOs, to, to focus on, on OPEX savings and, and how they can quickly and efficiently deploy more mobile, uh, mo mobile cell sites. And really from this comes the fact that uh, mobile field technicians are now being asked to, to do more than ever before. And on that front, uh, if you look in, in the past, the major focus for a mobile field technician, for example, was on really on RF testing and, and validation. And today with the move towards uh, FTTA, fiber to the antenna, or even CRAN, uh, mobile techs need to be, uh, I would say, a lot more versatile and, and really expand uh, their optical expertise and even their protocol expertise, something that they didn't really have to do in the past. Uh, a new term that is often used when, when, when we talk to, uh, to our customers is, uh, is hybrid techs. And this really means that uh, mobile technicians today are, are now responsible for, uh, for example, for fiber testing. So that means that they have to have uh, in some ways, in some capacity, uh, optical expertise. Uh, they also have to to do uh, protocol testing, either over CIPRI or OBSI. So on that sense, it means that they have to have some level of uh, protocol level expertise. They also have to do something that's uh, fairly new in this industry is RF spectrum analysis over CIPRI or over OBSI. And again, that brings its share of uh, new expertise and all this along with uh, the, the traditional expertise that they had, which is uh, RF, uh, analog RF uh, testing expertise. And from this, based on all these, these new uh, skill sets, there's uh, test and measurement equipment today also needs to, I, I would say, to really adapt to these uh, changing realities. And, and the test and measurement industry has to, to provide test solutions that uh, that provides uh, mobile field technicians and contractors with all these testing requirements uh, for their, I would say, for their day-to-day -day working activities. Uh, one thing that is, I would say is crucial is to, to have a, uh, a frontal test solution that combines uh, all these testing functions that I mentioned uh, previously, so optical uh, protocol with CIPRI, with OBSI, uh, even our spectrum analysis uh, over CIPRI or even OBSI, and even having the capabilities to do uh, what we call over-the-air testing capabilities with, with RF. And having a, a, a test solution that combines all this, in the end, really uh, helps MNOs to reduce, I would say, truck rolls, and also reduce the number of tower climbs, which is, as we, we, we know, is, is extremely expensive uh, in, the, uh, in the industry. So all this really comes down to, to saving, uh, saving costs for the MNOs and also for the contractors. And the last, probably, uh, I would say, the last key point I would mention on this is the fact that at EXO, we've been working really closely with uh, all the top tier one MNOs uh, operators around the world, and with the collaboration that, that we that we that we share, the partnership that we share, uh, we design a, I would say, a truly unique uh, frontal test solution that combines all these testing functionalities into one uh, all-in-one test solution for the uh, frontal uh, frontal industry and mobile industry as a whole. All right, Marquis Doré, Frontal Product Line Manager at Expo. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Martha. Thank you for having me today.